I recently published two videos in which I was over the moon with enthusiasm to recommend a Tesla Powerwall to partner with a solar panel installation. I was thrilled to describe not only how much money I was saving, but actually making. I mean, listen to the kinds of things that I was saying. I have told people that my solar panels and my Powerwall are the best thing I've ever ever bought. You must have at least one battery for your home if you're going to go solar. It is not economical at all to not have some sort of battery. Then a few thoughtful comments from some of my viewers alerted me to a terrible possibility. I may have made a huge misconception when reading my utility bill. A big enough misconception that financially I may have been better off without a Powerwall. And I paid $9,000 for that thing. So, that is the problem I'm going to be looking at in this video. However, before I go into that, I want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Ben and this is a new channel. It's a channel about innovation. Tesla is a favorite topic of mine because there are so many things the company is trying to change. And not just EVs, but like the whole car buying experience or roadside assistance or insurance or how people monitor and think about their home energy use. There's so much material to discuss. My Tesla videos have been attracting a huge number of new subscribers, so I wanna make sure that you understand what this channel is all about. I actually split up my videos into numerous playlists covering a variety of topics. So if you'd like to see more about what I do, or especially if you liked my first Tesla review, I definitely recommend that you check out some of my personal favorites. I've got one about 5G and another one about education. You don't have to go anywhere right now though. I will put links to them in the description below. Right now, let's go back to talking about this problem. In this video, I'll describe my misconception and then I'll analyze my utility bill to get down to the truth. Let's suppose my income and expenses are represented on this set of axes. This is good, it means I'm making money. This is bad, it means I'm losing money. For simplicity, let's strip the analysis of every factor except how my balance is influenced by my energy bill and power wall. The power wall with permitting and installation was about $9,000, so I'm already starting off in a hole. However, as I said in my first video, and this was not a mistake, I'm definitely making money every month for the energy I put back into the grid. So my graph looks something like this. My previous understanding was that the power wall was preventing me from paying higher rates during peak hours. So without a power wall, I thought my graph would look something like this. So in the long run, I believed I'd be saving or making much more with a power wall than without one. Then a few of my viewers made some comments that caused me to believe that the red graph that I had in my head may have been all wrong. So I called my utility company and asked some questions clarifying my bill and I found out that I had in fact made a mistake. What if, for example, instead of looking like this, the red graph looks like this. Given the fact that the performance of the power wall, like any other battery, has performance decline over time and the warranty is 10 years, if this point of intersection is past the 10 year mark, then the power wall isn't doing me any good. It's very possible that my power wall was a completely unnecessary purchase. If so, that would be really bad for me, but hopefully I can save my viewers a lot of trouble by making this video. Lastly, I want you to know that I'm filming this live, so to speak. Like, I don't know what the analysis is going to reveal. Hopefully it's not as bad as I suspect. Maybe it'll be fine. So with that being said, let's take a look at this. This is the thing I didn't understand. When you're a net metering customer, the energy company stores your energy for you, essentially. You look at the amount of energy you've used up all year, and then you look at the amount of energy that you've produced all year. Either that you produced more than you used, or you used more than you produced. So at the very end of the year, if you used more than you produced, you pay for it. And if you produced more than you used, you get paid for it. So if that's the case, why am I saving my power in a power wall when the energy company is just going to deduct it from my bill? Without a question, the solar panels will pay for themselves within a few years. However, it's the power wall I have questions about. There are two ways it could pay for itself over time. One, by being on the power wall during peak hours and on the grid only during super off peak hours, I save the price differential of those two rates. In other words, the greater the price differential, the greater the savings. Two, if the energy company is crediting me less for the power I put into the grid, or if they are charging me fees for the delivery of that power, I might be saving more money by keeping the power on my property rather than putting it onto the grid. I really want to find out that the power wall was totally worth it, so I set out to find one of two things. First, I was hoping to find that there's a great price differential between the peak and off-peak rates. Let's see how that went. So here's what they told me. They told me that electricity delivery, that's how much they charge me for bringing energy to my house. 
and it doesn't matter what time of day it is, the rate for bringing energy to the house is always the same, 19 cents. Then electricity generation, I don't know why they call this generation. It should be called like usage in my opinion, but whatever, it's the amount of energy that you use. So that's why we have it's seven cents when you're during the peak hours, six cents when you're off peak and five cents when you're super off peak, which is like super early in the morning. So those amounts aren't that big of a deal. I mean, I don't think so. You pay one cent more per kilowatt hour if you're on peak as opposed to off peak. Like I thought it was more dramatic than that. Allow me to elaborate on this. The one cent difference is a 4% increase in price. I save 4% when I use off-peak power. Because the power wall has 90% round trip efficiency, 10% of power generated by my panels is lost. That's power the energy company would have credited me for. So if I was counting on off-peak savings to offset the costs of the power wall, I was mistaken. Let's look for the second factor though. How much exactly is the energy company paying me for the power I put into the grid, and are there any delivery fees for that power? This was a harder question to answer just by looking at my bill. Now, I was told they paid me the same rate that the energy is worth during those hours. This is so ridiculous. Why don't they just show me exactly what they pay me? Okay, so I want to know, gosh, this is so silly. I don't know what the amount is, honestly. So what do they freaking pay me? Like, do they charge me for the delivery? Wow, you know what? I thought I could make sense of this. I can't make sense of this. <sighs> Got it. Holy moly. Okay, applied credits right there. So in this October bill, it shows that I produced 54 kilowatt hours during off-peak hours. And for that, I got paid for, or I got a credit of $14. Yes, this is what I needed to know. This is going to be major. I, you know what? My number sense is telling me this is going to be a bad deal. 25, holy cow, what? They actually, oh my goodness. Okay, so they are even crediting me with the delivery costs. So they're, I mean, that's the only way that that makes sense. Because I'm being paid 19 cents. Oh my gosh. They, it's true. So when I put energy into the grid, they're giving me credit for the delivery of that energy and they're giving me credit for the generation of that energy. So they are truly giving me the amount that I generate as credit. Man, that sucks. I need to turn off my power wall right now. I don't want them to be paying me for the delivery because if they do, then that means they're giving me a really good deal, which means Powerwall was not a good idea. This blows. Okay, let's recap. To answer the first question, I needed to determine how much they paid me at different times of day. The rate is split into two parts, delivery and generation. The prices in February were approximately 27 cents on peak, 25 cents off peak, and 24 cents super off peak. Spending up to 10% more isn't as bad as losing 10% with the power wall efficiency when you consider that using the power wall puts wear on it and the performance decreases with time. However, after I filmed myself looking through my bills, I found the summer rates online. Check this out. Peak hours are more than twice the cost of super off peak where super off-peak is about equal to on-peak for winter. Even though I didn't film myself discovering this fact, I think it's important because it could influence things. It took a while to figure out what the utility paid me. I never found it explicitly written, but I could calculate the rate using my net metering summary. For example, this line shows I generated 54 kilowatt hours and was credited $14. That means I was credited almost 26 cents per kilowatt hour for that energy. In other words, true to their word, I get credited the same amount they would have charged me. Using these numbers, I was able to make approximations for how much I could be credited in a given month, with and without a power wall. For winter, I used data from my Tesla app from December to get these numbers. I'm also assuming the power wall is always used during peak hours, and I always used the grid during off-peak hours. 
I assume the energy put into the grid is paid the off-peak rate. When I made the calculations without a power wall, I knew energy that would have charged the power wall would go to the grid instead. And similarly, the energy taken from the power wall would have been taken from the grid. So I deducted that cost. If you'd like to review these numbers, go ahead and pause here. My conclusion was that with or without a power wall, I would see very little difference in my bill. When I did the same thing for summer, I used numbers from July. I treated the rates the same way, although this was a simplification since the panels are still catching a little sun during the evening and summer. As a result, there is still very little difference in costs, all the while wear is being put on the battery. To be clear, at the end of the year, that credit converts to a payment, but the conversion is very low. I could not find it in my bill, nor did I bother to interpret all the fees, but all my credits for the whole year came out to about $250. All right, so that's my analysis. So did I make a mistake? I mean, I have my own thoughts. I'd like to know yours. Hopefully some advantages of Powerwall do come across. Like, it is very nice to be immune to power outages and it does provide some flexibility for rate changes, but, I mean, $9,000? Go ahead and throw your questions, your comments. If there's something in my analysis that you think I did incorrectly or a factor that I didn't consider, point it out, let me know. Like, I don't wanna make any more mistakes, and Lord knows the last YouTube commenters helped me out a lot. Um, if you like this video though, do give it a thumbs up and you can also follow me on Twitter at NeverBeenBetter or read my blog at NeverBeenBetter.com. Thanks for watching.